what we have different to offer is a way to know about your Messiah, know about Jesus Christ, and also know the life he lived, know the holy days he kept, how he dressed, how he worshiped, the language he spoke. I mean, all that culture that surrounded Messiah was very Jewish or Hebraic in nature, and that's what makes Messiah Chad so different is we capture that Jewish, that Hebraic culture inside of our worship on top of worshiping Messiah or Jesus Christ. Blessing which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And the name is, now this is the blessing. Yep, so that's the title of this Torah portion. Now this is the blessing. And what is this Torah portion about, Ron? When you want to tell everyone what it's all about, what, what is all this stuff? Moses was blessing who? He was blessing J Joshua. Yep, he was blessing Joshua and he blessed all the tribes. It's about that discipline. You want to get down to the bottom of your soul and then you want to shape it. You want to mold it. You want to cleanse it. The reason why I'm talking about this for Yom Kippur is because, yes, rabbinical Judaism gives you a lot of framework and a lot of things to do to afflict your soul. Do whatever is necessary for you to afflict your soul. Well, Tosh Leek service is, uh, I mean, it's very symbolic. I mean, it comes from what the rabbis found in Micah chapter 7, 19. And it's about, you know, casting your sins as far away as you can go, which is like the bottom of the ocean or the bottom of a river. So although we physically throw bread or, or pebbles into water to, to cast our sins into the bottom, um, it's, it's also very symbolic. I mean, this is a time of year where we really focus on anything that we've done wrong, maybe someone we've said something to or a sin that we've committed. And we just get very reflective and, and even New Testament believers, even though you have Yeshua, you have Jesus Christ, and He forgives you every morning, it doesn't mean you do something wrong in the afternoon. So this just once a year, we just really even get more reflective and dig deep and find anything we may have done. Atonement is just such a huge, integral part of Yom Kippur. If you've been to a Yom Kippur service where there's so much to do, you're not able to focus on and really think about the atonement part, you're doing too much.
But what I think is very interesting that sometimes we don't take from the high holy days and then Sukkot, it's all about being humble. <laughs> It's about being simple. It's about still remembering Yahweh. Don't make your house so clean and your life so good during the days of awe, up leading up to Yom Kippur, that you can't then leave your house. You can't leave your comforts and go be out amongst people.